Good morning, everyone. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I uh, hope all of you are able to hear me. Yes, we can. Yeah, thanks for confirming. Okay, I see a few of the new joiners as well. Um, maybe I, I probably would like to hear from you, like uh, your name, where are you currently working, and why do you want to learn uh, Power BI? Because this is a uh, Power BI session. Uh, so just want to hear it from you. Why do you want to learn Power BI? Um, and a little introduction about, about you, please. Your name, where are you working? If you are currently working somewhere or, you know, you may be a fresher. Um, so why do you want to learn Power BI? Hi, Kishore. This is Varun Kumar. Can you able to listen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Varun. Yeah, actually, presently I'm working for TCS and it is non non IT related. And I have just a good knowledge on Excel sales and relating the reports. So I just want to go through the Power BI. And I just need your suggestion whether I, I need to continue with this weekend class or the regular class, which is going to start in the next week, morning hours. Uh, depends on your schedule uh, because both the contents are same. Um... If you are finding comfortable over the weekends, you can join the weekends. Otherwise, every day it's going to be morning, seven thirty to uh, nine o'clock uh, session. So yeah, it depends on your schedule. Maybe today for orientation, you can continue in this one. Then later you can take a call. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm from near Hyderabad only, but due to base location, I just moved to Chennai. I'm working in Chennai TCS. That, okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, I am Shweta and uh, I hold the particular years of experience. Uh, presently, I'm working for Reliance India Retail Limited. <clears throat> uh, I just wanted to understand what Power BI is and I just wanted to grow in my career. So that's the reason today I'm here. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. I see a few more new participants today. So if you could introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Anil. I have a total nine years of experience. Presently, I'm working with Genpack from non-IT. I just want to learn uh, Power BI and grow in my career. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, this is Karuna. I'm working as a senior business analyst with Image Technologies, Bangalore. 
just uh, I want to uh, improve my skills uh, in the visualization part so that I'm planning to take it this, this session and uh, I'm planning to take uh, this training. Sure. Thank you. Hi, this is Malishwari. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I'm working as a technical lead in uh, XLR Technologies, and uh, I have uh, nine plus years of experience. Uh, I'm I would like to learn uh, new technologies, uh, so I just want to learn, and also I'm uh, good in uh, back end, so I want to learn uh, this kind of uh, reporting tool. Oh so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hi, this is Rujina. Uh, I'm working as a manual tester in Cognition Technology Services and uh, like I have total nine years of experience. Uh, I would like to um, learn the Power BI for my career growth, but uh, I, have, I have one doubt like uh, how many years of experience I can keep with this training? At least uh, a three plus because the concept that we are going to discuss, it covers uh, almost an expert level training. So at least a three plus uh, should do. Okay. Yeah. Resume and all the things uh, uh, will be provided, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think there are a few more. Good morning, sir. I am Vanta Rash from Hyderabad. I am a Path 23 Path Road Bless. I am a Tesher. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, hi, guys. Uh, this is Surya. So, I am Associate Lead from Global Logic and I have six plus years of experience and uh, two plus years as experience as an Associate Lead. So as of now, I wanted to change my career path to analytics. So I'm learning for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Bhargav. So uh, I have completed my master's in data science recently. And, uh, and as BI tool, reporting tool is uh, trending there. So I want to start learning BI tool. Yeah, thank you. So I have a doubt. Is it the right way to start with BI tool or um, uh, Excel, SQL, and then Power BI? Can you suggest? You completed your data science masters. That's what you said. Are you currently doing it? Yeah, I have completed. Uh, uh, yeah, I have completed, but I haven't uh, no, not got like much knowledge on SQL. So like related to Power BI. Hmm. Okay, then it's uh, <clears throat> good to know some bar of SQL uh, first because I think usually in the data science, they cover SQL, SQL as well, right? At least the data extraction related fundamentals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that fine? Uh... Should be okay because when it comes to the data model preparation, uh, we need to understand, um, you know, the tables and the table structure and the, how the tables can be related. So we'll, anyways, just uh, stay, um, you know, in this session for a couple of hours and then probably if you are able to understand every concept that we are discussing here then great you can proceed but otherwise usually the recommendation is start from excel understand all the you know uh, formulas how to prepare the tables because excel is like a it has got a very easy user interface anyone can easily work with that one and write the formulas there right so mm -hmm. uh, okay so, so just uh, <clears throat> uh, stay in this session um, maybe after that we can connect once again okay yeah All right, anyone else is left? I think maybe we got a couple of uh, offline participants here. Uh, your name, where are you currently working and uh, why do you want to learn Power BI? Yes, sir, I'm Lakshman and working in biologically limited on the and analysis platforms. Yes, I'm learning Power BI for my career. Biologically? Yeah. By any chance I was there in a... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> cool, <laughs> I got that. 
I mean, opportunity to work with. I mean, we are closely work with uh, working with um, uh, biologically yeah. and multiple programs. I mean, they are actually coming up with a power BI training session as well. If I'm not wrong, we have already shared the proposal with them. Uh, so yeah. we're just waiting for the final approval. But it's not going to be uh, like a 30 hour training program. It's just like a one day session. One what day. they are planning for? Uh, maybe next month or next to next month, we'll we'll do one session there. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Okay, so I, I can can we assume that you are already good with uh, some part of Excel? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, I'm I'm Kishore. It's uh, it's been a good uh, close to 15 years of experience. I got uh, um, I'm I work with different companies. I work with different tools. Uh, right from beginning of my career, started with I started with Excel. Uh, people call it advanced Excel for some reason, but it's simply Excel. Um, uh, you know, working with so many formulas, and then moved on to VBA macros, uh, coding uh, Excel related stuff, and automating my regular reporting work, and then. Uh, started working with uh, uh, this VBA macros to automate other applications as well, just not only Excel, and then uh, access SQL, SAP question reports, SAP BOBI, the business objects and business intelligence, click uh, uh, view, Power BI, Tableau, uh, currently working on, uh, I mean, currently learning uh, Power Apps on Power Automate. Uh, got experience in uh, various different uh, domains like uh, US healthcare, revenue cycle management, financial data analysis, ID analytics, and so many things. Worked with RPA as well, Macro Express, and uh, <clears throat> with automation. Uh, I mean, I'm, I got a good number of certifications. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, Microsoft certified professional, Deloitte Faculty Excellence certified, um, a PL300 data analyst associate, Power BI certified, uh, Excel expert, Word expert, Access expert. Almost I got certification in every, every uh, MS Office product. Um, so this is my uh, skill graph. Probably a, a few things to be modified here, but that's okay. Um, completed MBA uh, in uh, HR and finance and HR. I was I'm I'm currently working as a consultant with uh, multiple companies, but uh, recently one of those engagements that I'm done with that it was with uh, Quadratix. I was into Power BI development there. Prior to that, I was with Deloitte. I was with United Health Group, and that list is too big. So that's a quickly uh, you know. A, a, Brief introduction about me. Um, so, yeah, so let me just take you through the course contents. But before we start this one, I would like to once again hear from you. Do you have any expectations from this session? Like you would have researched something, right? You, if you have chosen this Power BI, so definitely um, you, you would have learned a few things at least if you would have done that research earlier. Right. Online participants, if you have any expectations from this session. Mm. Go on, please. Nothing. So that makes my job easier than much more easier. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the course contents. And before this, let me tell you about uh, how this course runs. This is designed for weekends, almost four or maybe four and a half weekends we spend, okay, every Saturday, Sunday. Uh, 10 to one is what we say, but we usually start around 10, 10, 15, somewhere 10 to 10, 15 between, okay. Maybe the first few minutes we'll be discussing the previous topics and all. Then we will to, just a second, let's just. The month. Okay, so for four and a half weekends, uh, you know, in this one, uh, to simply tell you right from the data, you know, transformation fundamentals to how to get a powerful dashboard up to that level, we'll learn. Okay, so almost like a, a good 
number of hours we spend on this tool. Um, so just a second. Yeah. Okay. So what is that I'm going to learn as part of this training? Introduction to Power BI. What is what is BI? That's where we start. Okay, what is business intelligence, right? Why is it needed? Okay, the history of Power BI, benefits of Power BI, the different components involved in Power BI, right? How to install Power BI desktop. And we'll be covering this one as part of our uh, training session itself. It's like very easy stuff. You, can, you all can install in your personal laptops and it doesn't require any license uh, as long as you are using as a free, I mean, the single free user. You don't need to buy any license, but if you want to implement the same thing in an organization, there are different licenses available. Uh, uh, okay. Someone is trying to join the audio call, but. Uh, Right, so as a free license user, you don't need to pay anything there. Uh, it's like just download and use it like a, uh, as good as any other application that we install and use it, okay? But when you want to implement the same thing in an organizational level, there are different licenses available, be it a pro license or a PPU, premium per user or a premium capacity server, right? Different things are available. When it comes to uh, the implementation part, I'll explain you the different licenses and how they're costing is okay and companies which one they prefer i'll explain all that stuff but as a free single user we all install in our laptops like this it's like very easy anyone can get that application from the microsoft store or i'll also provide you a link from there you can download it okay as part of this one we'll also do a power bi service registration that is a power bi server okay uh, the cloud version of it okay how to uh, use that one, but for that one, you need to have an account. Okay, how to create that one, uh, that account. Uh, to create that account, you need an organizational email address, something like you cannot use, uh, let's say, kumar at gmail.com. It doesn't work, the Gmail, Yahoo Mail, and all. You need to have a company's email account. So, as you two are working somewhere, then you can use your company's email account. Absolutely no issue. That is only for the verification purpose. Okay, the verification code will be sent to that email address and you just copy that and uh, activate your account. That's it. But when it comes to others, I'll show you a way how to get uh, <clears throat> an organizational email account. It's a temporary email account I can give you and using which you all can register on Power BI service as well. Okay. And then the different steps involved in uh, uh, building a Power BI report and we see one sample today as well. I'll quickly show you how you can create one report. Okay, and uh, matter of seconds, not seconds, maybe a few minutes are needed, but in seconds also we can create, but a meaningful dashboard we can create in matter of few minutes and uh, uh, quickly visualize the data, you know, uh, large data sets can be quickly, quickly visualized using Power BI, right, and creating a sample report, we'll see that one today. And when it comes to the reports and uh, dashboards, you may be thinking about other tools as well, like, uh, why don't we go with Tableau? Why don't we go with uh, ClickView? Or why don't we go with any other tool that is available in the market? Why Power BI only? Right? You may be getting that question as well. Um, so there are so many reasons. I'll show you the comparison table. There are few places where Power BI does really, really great, and few places Power BI is one step behind you know, the other tools. Uh, when it comes to Tableau, Tableau can handle large sets of data. Of course, Power BI can also do, but as a as a pro user, it has a capacity limitation that uh, every data set can go up to only one GB. I'll talk about the data set limitations and all uh, when we get into the detailed discussion about this one. Uh, but there are so many advantages, uh, not only in just terms of the functionality, in terms of the pricing also. Power BI comes for very uh, lesser price compared to the other tools. We'll talk about that one as well. And then uh, the very first step is uh, getting the data. Okay, getting the data and transform the data. So here I would like to show you.
how our reporting and uh, data analytics roles look. So data is there in the databases, right? We get the data using SQL language, or uh, sometimes your Power BI tool, you know, not, not necessarily you need to write a SQL query there. Directly you can connect to your database and you can retrieve the data. At the time of retrieving the data, you, you can use different kind of, uh, you know, things there, whether direct query or uh, import or live connection, different things are there, okay? We'll talk about the different things. Um, so when you want to get the data from a database, I think uh, till last class, uh, the ones who completed SQL with us, we worked with SQL, how to retrieve the data and then uh, use that output with any of our reporting tools. But now onwards, these tools can directly interact with our databases and they can get the data. Okay, so while getting the data, what kind of steps are involved and what is that we need to do? That ETL activity, we'll talk about that one. What is this ETL? Try to understand this one. The data that is there in the database may not be in the right shape to directly report it. Then what we need to do, we need to perform a, a transformation activity, okay? So we extract the data from the database, we transform the data, we load the data. So maybe this, this part, particular thing mostly used in the data engineering team side, wherein they extract the data from multiple sources, they transform the data into required shape, they load the data into a data warehouse. You would have heard this word data warehouse, right? So what is data warehouse? It's a central repository of all our different databases, right? You get a question, why do I need to have a central repository? Why can't I report it on individual databases? A simple thing. You have a data center in Hyderabad. Let's assume you have, let's take a Reliance Fresh kind of an example. You have, you have a database, okay, in Hyderabad for Reliance Fresh. You have a database in Chennai for Reliance Fresh, okay? You have a database in uh, Mumbai, Kolkata, different places, right? So if a CEO wants to see a centralized report, what's happening? That means you know they need to they need to be in a position to report uh, you know using a single database right so if you are connecting to multiple data sources and reporting it it's not um, a right way because the CEO needs to connect to Hyderabad data center to understand what's happening in Hyderabad connect to other data center to uh, you know, understand but what these people do the data engineering people uh, do is that they they set up a process called ETL, extract, transform, load, right? They extract the data from the multiple databases, they transform the data into the required shape, and then they load the data into a central repository called data warehouse, okay? So connecting to that data warehouse, we can directly create the report and which consists of all the locations because all the data is there in one place, data warehouse. Okay, so we'll talk about those concepts as well. And uh, just, you know, not only that, there are like uh, so many files, uh, file types that we use, like Excel file, most commonly used. What if my data is there in Excel? How to report it? It's very easy. You can connect to the Excel sheet and you can quickly uh, create the reports, right? And uh, <clears throat> you can use CSV. What is the full form of CSV? CSV. CSV. Comma separated it. values. Comma, comma separated values. Comma separated values. Yeah. So most uh, commonly used, uh, you know, data. Uh, I mean, file format. Most of the systems they use uh, CSV as their input uh, file type. You can input directly, right? CSV comma separated values. Not only that, you can directly load a folder. In the folder, you may have multiple CSV files or multiple Excel files. You can combine everything into one. I can give you a simple example here. I have a folder with 10 Excel files that have the same table structure. 10 Excel files, same table structure. And I want to create a consolidated report, okay? So what is that I do? I open each and every Excel file. I copy paste the data into one sheet and then I prepare a report. That will take some time, right? What if I have 100 Excel files? It will definitely take more time. What if I have 1000 Excel files? Right. So what I used to do is that create a macro. What is the macro? It's a VBA program, right? And you can uh, create a macro and this macro will open each and every file and consolidates everything into one file. Macro can do this. But uh, without any coding knowledge also, you can do this one with simple clicks. That's what we're going to learn in Power Query data transformation. 
There we gather the data from multiple Excel files uh, from one folder or multiple CSV files from one folder with one client, right? There are a few techniques available, I'll show you. Um, and not only that, not only the files, local files, you can also use a SQL server, connect to a SQL database. I have one uh, local server installed in my laptop. I'll show you how to connect to that and get the data. MS Access is another, uh, you know, uh, RDBMS available, which is a database application again. And you can also get the data from a website directly. You now need to copy the data into your local computer. You can directly connect to a website, whatever the tables and the, you know, data files that we have on the web pages, we can read the data from there and present it in Power BI. I'll show you one example today using, um, I, I always use this COVID data, which is present on WHO website. I can directly connect to that one and I can get the data, right? Uh, Power Query Editor, what is Power Query Editor and uh, how to use the different features of Power Query Editor and how to understand uh, there is something called M language, M query. I'll explain this one as well, mashup query, mashup language. And load versus direct query. Nothing but uh, importing the data versus directly querying. And this is possible with uh, any RDBMS if you're using. Um, append queries, merge queries. Uh, you would have heard the joins in SQL. Joins are merge queries, okay? Joins functionality, nothing but getting the other table columns into your result set is, is join, right? The same join, you can call it merge. Union is append query. So if someone is very, very new to SQL, you may be finding these uh, few, I mean, joins and uh, unions may be new to you, but that's that's okay. You know, I, how to do these things in Power Query, I'll show you. Filtering the rows and so many other things are there as part of our data transformation. So basically in this uh, module, what we are going to learn is that how to get the data from the data, different data sources and how to transform the data into the required shape. That's what we are, you know, we will learn. Um, data modeling, very, very, very important because I, I would like to tell you one simple statement here. Your data may be accurate, okay? If your data model is created incorrectly, data is out accurate, but the data model is created incorrectly, then your dashboard or the report will also show incorrect numbers. Data is accurate data. You know, the kind of query that you wrote or the transformations that you did, everything is absolutely, you know, correct. But if the data model path, if you do something incorrectly, then your report shows incorrect numbers. Okay, so we need to be very, very careful while uh, building, you know, the while designing the data model, you know, what are the tables are there, what kind of keys are there, how we can join them, I mean, to say like uh, the relationships, right, how to create them, all those things we'll discuss. Um, so there we also understand the importance of creating a date table, okay, a date dimension, um, why a date table is needed, okay, what kind of role it plays in the data analysis, because most of the times, if you see the data analysis, that depends on the dates only, right? What happened last month or what happened in the last rolling 12 months or what happened last year, same period last year, or what happened two years ago in the same period, right? Parallel period and so many functions are there. We call them time intelligence functions. We'll talk about them, okay? But yeah, we just create the date table there uh, and we build one model and using that model, we'll proceed to the data visualization, right? You got the data, you transform the data, you build a model. Once the model is ready, what is the next thing? Visualize the data, right? As part of the visualization, there are the default, uh, you know, good uh, 30 different types of charts available. We'll discuss them. And along with that, we'll also understand custom visuals, how to download custom visuals. I'll show you a couple of custom visuals today, okay? And different types of charts are there. And most of us have this question. I would like to hear it from you. You would have seen a few dashboards already, maybe some point in meetings are developed by someone else. A few of the dashboards, the moment you take a look at them without any explanation, you, are, you basically understand what's going on, right? That is one kind of dashboard. Probably in other few meetings, you would have seen something like, so many charts, visuals are used, but you don't understand anything unless someone stands there and explains each and everything. You would have gone through both, both of the situations, right? Someone who is working. 
you know what could be the difference there how you know the first one you are able to understand even without saying anything the second one is with the explanation only you can understand it's because of the visuals that they use the kind of visuals that they use how many of you have this question and like you know you know i know so many different visuals but i don't know which type of visual to be used where if i am presenting some kind of data like this and what is an appropriate visual for this one how many of you have this question now i have some data and i'll ask you to create a visual and you may be thinking like which one is a suitable visual for this data online participants you have any question on that one which one is the right correct or an appropriate visual for this kind of data anyone here who struggled a lot to choose the right type of visual if you have created a few reports in excel no so you mean to say everyone knows no okay i i see it yeah most of the times we get this question so we have one uh, session on choosing the type right type of the visual okay i'll, I'll explain this one okay just follow this one you can create any kind of a visual and an appropriate visual okay so when it comes to the visualization the very first thing what we discuss is that what is that you would like to show right what would you like to show so when that question comes you may be showing a comparison let's say you want to understand uh, last year and this year how are we doing right comparison department to department how the head count comparison right salaries last year this year how is it comparison right whenever you want to do the comparisons it's either again an next question comes among the time or over the time if it is among the time let's say five students are there in the same exam how their scores are i want to see in a visual so that means five students comparison i'm doing same exam nothing but the among the time a few categories nothing but only five students are there if their names are short kumar raju ravi short names go with column chart if they got long names you know a bigger name then go with the bar chart see everything is available here you know uh, when you get into a situation okay what is it i want to show if that question is clear then this entire uh, flow will tell you what kind of chart that you need to use let's say you want to do a comparison one student performance or one stock performance from the last uh, you know one year 12 months every month we got a data point recorded for the stock i mean talk i'm talking about the stock exchange one of the scripts value so last 12 months how the value movement is okay so that means it's a comparison over the time non cyclical data with 12 periods single value line chart right so i'll i'll take you through a detailed explanation about this one so that you can understand what kind of chart to be created for this particular data set right so we all can create the different charts but how you know quickly they are able to convey the message to the end user that's what matters right so that is where we learn all these things you know if you want to go for the composition static composition are changing over the time static composition share of uh, total then it, either it is a donut chart or a pie chart share of total and the sub total is a tree map chart waterfall or a pie of pie or a bar of pie and so many things are there right okay so i'll i'll take you through uh, this particular image when we get into with the visualization section okay all right so there we'll also talk about the custom visuals that's what i said and then how to work with the filters slicers parameters okay interactions <laughs> drill down and roll up you would have worked with slicers in excel what is a slicer 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 online slicer what is a slicer work with it slicer in excel we will work with it sir correct yeah what is that slicer what, what does it do it filters it will data. give the data in uh, parts hmm okay so we have seen this one on a pivot table usually when you create yes, a pivot sir. table we link a slicer with the pivot table 
And when you click on that slicer value, it will filter the pivot table. Let's say I may have, let me quickly show you this. Hmm. It's like a filter on the slicer. You see this one, I want to understand what happened in 2009, 2010, 11, 12, right? In 2009, Jan to June, right? You see all of them are changing. I can clear this, I can clear this. This is a slicer. So the same kind of slices are there in Power BI as well uh, to filter the data. Apart from that, we also have filters like visual level filters, page level filters, report level filters, we'll talk about them. And uh, so many things are there. So when client uh, uh, is looking at a report, may get some question like, you know, what happened? You know, why this particular category is uh, giving us very less profit, right? When they want to know more about uh, that particular category, we can also enable them to go, uh, go for a drill down analysis there. One step down, they can go inside the data and see what happened there, right? A drill down roll of features we can uh, create. Okay, a simple report you all will be able to create by this level. But when it comes to complex reports, complex report in terms of implementing a lot of DAX in them. Okay, what is DAX? Data analysis expressions. These things look very much similar to our Excel formulas. If you are good with Excel formulas, you all can write DAX. Basic DAX, you all can write because the basic DAX syntax looks very much similar to our Excel function syntax only, right? But there in Excel, we have the grid style, grid nothing but uh, these reference styles, A1, sum of A1 to A10, sum of uh, A1 to D10, right? Our uh, max of so-and-so range. There we write the grids, I mean the grid style, the reference style, right? A1, A10 and all. But here either we check the column or a table. So we'll talk about that in detail. So when you want to create a very powerful report with so much, so many insights in it, okay, you definitely need to write DAX functions there. Data analysis expressions, right? These things look similar to Excel functions. There we talk about logical, aggregate, date, time. We also call them as time intelligence functions, text functions, mathematical, and there is something called calculate function. Very, very, very special function, you know, uh, when you create any kind of a real-time report, uh, you use most of the times VLOOKUP, right? So it's a surprise for me if someone creates a report without a VLOOKUP. Most of the times, right? Any Excel user who creates a report, VLOOKUP for sure, some point will be there because you need to look up the value in some other table and get the corresponding values, right? Similarly, I'll be surprised if you create a report in Power BI without a calculate function. So now you understand, you know, every, everything that we do definitely will try to, uh, you know, write a calculate function because it's like very powerful function. I'll explain that one in detail. We have a, a couple of sessions on calculate function itself. Okay. So once we are done with all these things, we create the, we created the visuals, we implemented a lot of DAX in it to draw more insights from the data. And then finally, once your uh, report is ready, you also need to understand how to publish it. Why do I need to publish this report? You may get a question, right? In the traditional reporting earlier, back in 2015, 16, 17 time, when I used to work in an environment, you create a report like in Excel format or something, and then or otherwise any other format, maybe a crystal report or something, and then you need to export that report, either a PDF or an Excel export, and then send it via email. And then client looks at it, and if they find it something wrong, and they reply back to the email saying that these numbers do not appear okay there, please correct them and send it back. Again, you need to rework on it and send it back, and if it is fine, fine, right? But but using Power BI, you know, no need to do all these things, right? What is that we do? We design, okay, <clears throat> we develop a report, we develop a report, and we publish it onto Power BI service. Okay, I'll also explain how to publish that one. So once you publish it, it will be available in the Power BI service. And if I, if someone is a client, they can log into the account, whatever the you know report that you have published, they can see it in their system, right? And there are so many things, you know, uh, online, um, you know, on this online platform also you can collaborate and you can work. So many features are there. They can give you the feedback there on the report itself. 
they no need to reply in the emails and all everything is like in that in that online platform itself okay so it turns out to be very very easy for us to manage and uh, you know maintain the assets asset is nothing but our reports and data sets and uh, you know whenever you want any new person to uh, access that report there are ways available you know you just need to add that person to the workspace and grant access to it and they can also view the report okay so it's like very easy stuff uh, there is a question, Kishore. Uh, can we import the data to Excel from BI? Will that work to team basic import the data from BI to Excel? Any data gets corrupted? No, absolutely no. You can uh, you can export your data sets uh, or data from Power BI to Excel, right? And uh, I think recently I've seen uh, one of the memes, I think. Uh, so there is a Power BI developer creates a nice report, okay? Very powerful report in Power BI. And finally the client asks, okay, everything looks great. Can I export this one to Excel, right? You know, people are that much habituated to, you know, working with Excel. You create anything, you know, very high-end, uh, using a very high-end report analytical tool, but uh, yeah, they still ask us to, you know, get our functionality to export this one into Excel because they want to play with those numbers, right? And once they get the Excel export, uh, then they can open it and they can write whatever the formulas they want to. So these things are not that flexible to on the flight to do something. And they require a little bit of training as well if they want to write any calculations and all in Power BI. But Excel, almost everyone is pretty much aware, right? That's why. Yes, absolutely no issue. You can export the data. And other thing I can tell you, Excel is from Microsoft. Or BI is from Microsoft. Usually you don't have those integration related issues. Also, it's like very easy to export and import the data, right? Okay, so we publish it, we grant permissions to different uh, users to access. And there is something called when it comes to granting the permissions and all, we also talk about RLS, row level security, right? I'll show you one thing. You know, if I'm sharing this dashboard with uh, my different managers, they can see the entire dashboard and this data, okay, belongs to the different regions. Okay, each region got one manager. Okay, so the thing is, uh, when I share this dashboard, all these managers will be able to see the other regions data also. But there we get a question like, is there any way that central regional manager should be able to see only central data, right? You know, what I used to do, I used to create a macro. Okay, this will open the source file, the main file. If I need to create a central file, it will pick up the other three or four regions like west, north, east, uh, south, delete that data, create a copy of this main file. Okay, so that we have a central profit dashboard. Okay, but what if I want to create north? Same process, delete the other regions data and keep only the north data. But we don't do this. Uh, you know, uh, we don't use this technique in Power BI. We don't need to. There is something called RLS, row level security. The dashboard is same for everyone. When I log in, if I'm a central manager, I see only central data. If you log in, you're a north manager, you see only north data. Dashboard is same, data set is same, but basically the kind of uh, access that we grant plus the kind of RLS that we create, you can see only that data that is, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, as per your role, that is the data set will be visible for you, right? So that is called RLS. We'll also talk about role level security, how to create the roles, how to manage the, ro manage the roles. In that one, we, we talk about static roles creation or dynamic roles creation. Why? Because static roles are okay. If an organization got like 20, 25 users, it's like very easy to manage their roles. But 2,000 users, so every time we cannot define a new role as and when a, some, some new uh, employee joins the organization, right? So we'll also talk about how to do the dynamic RLS there. Okay. So everything is great. We got the data, we transformed the data, and we built a data model. We created a report using the visualizations. We will understand what kind of visual to be used where. 
And after that, we enable the slicing and dicing like filters and all. Then we write a complex tax function to make it much more uh, you know, uh, interesting and insightful. And then uh, we publish the reports. Okay, we publish the reports online and we will uh, enable the users to view those reports. Everything is fine. Today I publish a report and tomorrow there will be changes in the data. Let's say if it is a daily sales report you created, right? Today you developed everything, everything is done. You set up the RLS, low level security and you publish the report onto Power BI service. So today your client looks at that report, everything is good. Tomorrow when your client looks at that report, uh, wants to see the most up-to-date data, yes or no? Right? That means your published report should be refreshed. If there are changes in your da database, those changes should reflect in your report as well, right? So probably a few of you would be in this kind of a role. I want to hear it from you once again. Anyone is in a role every day, you prepare a daily report, okay? A daily report. Every day you get the new data of yesterday's data. You dump the data into your standard Excel template and refresh all the pivot tables and you save it as a new copy of it and you send it with your uh, manager or any other client. Yeah? Yes. Daily reports. Right. Treasury MIS. So every day when you create a report, that's usually till yesterday, midnight, what happened, what all happened. In the morning time, you create the report. Yes. Common reporting thing. And every Monday, you by any chance, you create any weekly reports and they reflect the numbers of the last one week, monthly reports, quarterly reports, semi-annual reports, and annual reports. So this is again a traditional reporting, okay? Every day we sit on the system manually, we get the data and create the reports and send them within that uh, timeline because using those numbers, they need to take a call maybe for the day or for the week, how to you know proceed further. Most of the roles are like this only, right? But once you implement Power BI, you no need to do all this. There is something called automatic refresh or automatic schedule, a schedule refresh, you can call it. Schedule refresh, what it does, every day morning, eight o'clock, your report needs to be refreshed. You schedule a refresh. Then every day, eight o'clock, a job will be triggered and it will gather the data from your data source, whatever the required calculations, transformations to be done on the data, it will push the data into your Power BI report. When your client opens after eight o'clock next day, that person can see the most up-to-date data in the report. You no need to do manually. You can, whatever the standard, you know, things that you are doing every day manually can be automated, right? That's what we can do using Power BI data gateways. There is something called data gateway. There are like personal gateways and organizational gateways. I'll also show you how to set up those things. So if you look at this training program, this is, you know, this basically covers end to end, right from data gathering and how to schedule refreshes on your Power BI reports. Once you implement this model, you no need to do anything manually, everything like autopilot. Every day data gets updated, the updated data will be transformed automatically, right? And uh, all the visuals will uh, give you the most up-to-date data and it will be available on the Power BI service. And the people who are authorized to view that one using their login credentials, they will log into the Power BI service account and they can see the report, right? It covers end-to-end, -end. okay? All right, any questions so far? So the reports will be automatically updated uh, auto is every day or uh, they should publish every Correct. day? You know, you need to publish every day. Your publishing part is only one time, but if there are any modifications to take place, then we'll modify the report and we publish once again. But if it is the same report every day to be refreshed automatically, then there is something called schedule refresh. But for the schedule refresh, yeah, for few of the data sources, you need to set up the on-premises data gateway, uh, the data gateway, you can simply call it, right? Uh, so using that one, you can automatically refresh the reports. You know, you don't need to, uh, you know, have any manual intervention there. Okay, Every but, the, but yeah. the clients reflect the same data, right? So refresh data, uh, what they have published every day. Let's say if I publish a report, let me just show you that. Just a second, I'm opening uh, my Power BI service account.
This is how my Power BI service account looks, and uh, I have different workspaces. I can go to the recently completed batch, and there I have a few reports available. Um, so there is a sales report, right? So let's assume that the reports are daily updated. I mean, the data is daily updated, and uh, automatically the report should also be updated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I publish this report only once but after that what i can do is for that sales report there is something called data set okay the data set there is something called uh, schedule refresh Hold on. I've changed the data source to a different place. So that's the reason it's showing. But yeah, uh, let me explain this one. So there is something called refresh, and uh, I need to change this one to you know on. And I have an option here weekly, what all days I want to refresh it, and at what time I want to refresh it. So automatically, it will refresh whatever the uh, you know updated data is present in that uh, file. It will pick that data and it will show the report like this. Yeah, yeah. So publishing part is only once, but refresh is done daily. Okay. And we also have can we set up automatic email to be sent to yeah. Without man, yes, yes, possible. You can send the screenshot of the report. You can also send the successful night notifications or failure notifications. And there is something called subscriptions. Okay, we'll add the email addresses there as soon as this report is ready and an automated uh, email will be triggered to the client. With the link you can share or with the screenshot you can share, different options are there, okay? Yeah, so this report, you can even open in Power BI Desktop. Okay, this one, let me open. 439, right? Okay, there is another question. Can we do pivots in Power BI or it's only for visualization and charts? Course daily basis client take the data only from the pivots. Yeah. So pivot is again uh, one of the visuals available in uh, Power BI. It's called matrix. Okay. You can create the same thing like a pivot table. Okay. Let me show. I think a couple of pivot tables may be there. Matrix. Uh, let me show you this. Yeah. You see this table here? It's basically a table, but I can change this one to matrix. Let me just quickly create. You see, if you are looking for something like this, okay, this is matrix only. There you have options to collapse the groups, expand the groups, okay, all that stuff. And you can export this one to a CSV file or an Excel file. Okay, so possible that yes, uh, this is also one of the visuals Matrix or a pivot table is one of the visuals available in Power BI. Okay. And uh, I was talking about the roles, right? There is a dynamic RLS setup. And we, we understand what is this uh, user principal name and all. So basically, the one who is logging in, we get the email address of the person. 
and basis on the email address will define what all this person should be able to access so i'll show you that one so we'll define uh, that pradeep should be able to access west region grady should be able to access central region right when this person logs in with this email address, automatically the central region will appear there for this person. Report is same for everyone, but they can see only that particular part of the data. So I can also view role as, let's say, if uh, Grady logs in with this email address, I need to just check whether that is set up in that way or not. Yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll anyways uh, do that one. Um, how to set up the RLS and how we can make one user to see only one particular data. Okay. Data is same in the back end, but uh, for the viewing purpose, it will be controlled. Okay. We'll see that one. I think static RLS also I created in that one. I can easily show you. So all these things step by step we do. No need to worry. I'm showing something at a very uh, uh, end of this course, like setting up the roles and uh, managing the users and all. But someone who is uh, already doing a lot of uh, you know uh, reports and uh, creating so many different reports for different users, you no need to do all that. Feast manager, version manager. Okay. So when the East manager logs in, let's assume that East manager logging into the report. You see this one, only the East data is visible. Okay. And uh, if a West manager logs in, only the West data will be visible. So this is how we can control. Data is same, but based on the logging uh, you know, credentials, it will show different uh, types of data there. I mean, different uh, regions data depends on what uh, how you define that, uh, you know, uh, row level security. Okay, so overall, this this course covers right from the data fundamentals, how to transform the data to how to create a report and publish and uh, make it available for all the other users in the organization, along with different row level security. Okay, rules. Any questions up to this point? If you are okay, then uh, I'll take you to a, a demo, a sample, how to create a Power BI report quickly. Yeah. Are we good? Any questions? Or uh, if you are trying to relate to, to your Excel uh, day, you know, daily work and you want to do a few things on your Excel data, is it possible in Excel or you know, in Power BI or not? PPT. Okay, is it possible to impro, uh, you know import the data into PPT? Yes, possible. I'll also show you one more very very interesting thing. Let's say this is the report, right? And there are options to export them to either PDFs or analyzing in Excel. And there is a way that you can import that one into a PPT. But PPT either like an you can embed like an image. When I embed like an image, yeah, current values and just embed like an image, the same dashboard or the report, whatever you create here, will come into your PPT as an image, embedded image. Okay. Let me show you. But there is another thing also. You can embed the live dashboard into your PPT. I'll show you that. Let it get exported first. Uh, does the other users? Uh, 
Now, should other users should have Power BI not required if share the link uh, as data? See, if you are uh, sharing the data, that's a different story. But if you want to share the report or something, then there is something, again, a license is needed if they want to access the Power BI service account. Okay, licensing part, I'll talk about that one later. But yes, if they also should be able to log into like this or maybe an app that we create and they should be able to log in. There are different techniques available how to share this report with uh, other users. Okay. My second. Okay, I hope all of you are able to see my screen. Right, this is how it comes your report. Okay, everything is like an embedded image. It, it's like an image, okay? This one, this one. Okay, but let me show you. What if I say, I'm at live data. Open power point. You may be thinking like uh, this is also very much similar to the previous one, right? This is also showing right here. But here you have an option. You see that one? I'm able to select the slicers. I can increase, you know, let's say I want to switch to the line chart. I want to check what if this is increased by so on. So percentage in consumer. Right, if the data changes in Power BI, this will be automatically refreshed here. Yeah, so let's say, so this, this thing just needs to uh, get refreshed, that's it. You know, the moment you update something in the raw data, the raw data will be fed into your Power BI report. And if the Power BI report is updated, automatically your PowerPoint, whatever the live, you know, thing that you embedded into PowerPoint will also be updated. Right, so yeah, you can also do this one like this. Okay, so this is also possible. So not only just into PDF or Excel, you can even export this one into PowerPoint. Okay, any? Other questions? Okay, so let me show you how to create a quick report. Okay, so to create any report, we have a few things. We get the data, we prepare the data model, we create the measures, DAX, right? We build the reports with the different visuals. We set up the RLS, row level security, and then we finally publish, okay? So we're going to do the same thing now. Uh, is there any host restriction or volume restriction? No, no, not. But yeah, in terms of uh, the, Data model size I spoke about, uh, if you're a pro user, uh, it gives you only a one GB capacity to publish one report. So the maximum you can go up to is one GB, but yes, uh, the other license types will give you up to 10 GB also, but you need to have a different license there, okay? But as a pro user, most of the companies, one GB data set is huge, but for few companies, one, one GB data set may not be enough because they handle a lot of data, right? So that's the reason they go with premium capacity or something, but uh, any 
you know, a data set which is under that one GB, you can happily go with the pro user license. Okay. Number of rows and all, there is no limitation as such, but in terms of exporting the data and all, there are limitations, but in terms of loading the data, no, as long as this is falling under that one GB capacity as a pro user, you can happily publish. Okay. All right, so using the same steps, I want to quickly create one report now. Take Power BI Desktop. And how to install this one Power BI Desktop, I'll uh, quickly show you that one as well. It's like very easy stuff. If you want to install Power BI Desktop, anyways, in our upcoming sessions, uh, we have one session uh, to specially talk about how to install, how to set up your Power BI service account and all. If you are looking for Power BI maybe right away, then go to Start button and uh, go to Microsoft Store. Okay. Search for Power BI desktop. Uh, you may be finding, you know, the moment you type Power BI, the other things are like Power BI Report Builder or Power BI, Power BI Desktop, you know, different things may, may be there. Go for Power BI Desktop. And if you already have it, it shows open. But if it is a new installation you are doing, it says get it, get. You just need to click get. And it's, uh, yeah, it may take about uh, 20, 25 minutes. Depends on your uh, bandwidth internet, okay? Uh, then you can, once the installation is over, it will also ask for registration. Uh, no need to do the registration as of now. Just cancel that registration. I'll show you how to register for Power BI service later. But it's very easy stuff if anyone would like to try it out. During this week itself, just go to Start menu, go to uh, Store, and type Power BI Desktop. Just download that one, and you can start working with it. No need to register on Power BI service, and I'll show you how, what is the process, you know, how to register. Once you are done with the installation, you open the very first screen. The welcome screen looks like this, Power BI desktop, and uh, the very first step to design any report is get the data, right? We can get the data from almost every data source. You name anything that is available there, okay? But few of the data sources may require custom connectors. You can download them, and you can install, and you can use them. But the standard uh, connectors like Excel, you know, uh, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Teradata, SAP HANA, you name anything, almost every source is available there. IBM, you know, DB2 database, SAP HANA, Teradata, Sybase, Postgre, MySQL, IBM, uh, Snowflake, Vertica, Infa, right? All these things. You also have data flows, data sets, okay? Power BI data sets, different things are there. We'll talk about them later. I'll, as a first step, what I'll, go with is I want to take a web page, right? Online services like SharePoint list or SharePoint folder, right? R script, Python script, OLEDB, right? Different things, online platforms also can use. Uh, I want to use a web page here, right? And that web page link is already there with me in my data sources. I'll share this material with you, okay? Entire material package, I'll share this one with you. There is one web page URL and uh, there we have the COVID cases, okay? So I can take that URL, just paste that one there. Only one thing is that you need to connect to the internet and uh, click OK. That's it. Right, and I have all the uh, data that is stored inside in the uh, CSV that is maintained by uh, WHO, right? Especially they have this, uh, uh, you know, URL for the COVID data, COVID-19 numbers, number of cases and deaths reported by different countries. I can load the data into our Power BI desktop. And all the data that is there on the COVID website, the WHO website is now being loaded into Power BI. Once that is loaded, now I can easily create the visuals. I just want to create a line chart, okay, to see how the cases movement is. So I'll show the date reported and the number of total cases, just like this. And if I want to slice and dice the data, you know a technique, there is something called slicer, and I'll take country, and there I'll take India. You see how it is, it, uh, how easy it is, just uh, select India, 
and you see our waves first wave second wave third wave right uh, recently also in uh, 2022 little spike again uh, a few months ago during april also there was like little spike from india okay not only that if you want to view the same data on a map chart okay choose that one right and i want to show the country the total number of cases i also want to show the who region you see this one region wise how the cases are right how it is there in europe africa you know india and all america it's like it's like you know just clicks you choose that and it will give you the output right and not only that if you want to get any custom visuals or uh, yeah even before going to custom visuals i would like to show you one more very interesting feature with power bi there is something called q and a question and answers okay this uses nlp natural language processing in excel if you want to build a chart okay what is that you need to do you need to understand the data you need to pick up the right type of chart and use the x axis y axis correctly then only you can get the correct view of the chart right but here you no need to be a master with the visuals just do a double click on the report canvas then it will enable the q and a section you can ask the questions to power bi how simple you can ask a question like uh, uh, total cases yeah total cases are 768 million right and i can switch i can convert this thing to a standard visual okay so i got this visual done i want to see one more thing um total deaths 7 million convert this thing to a standard visual done i want a column chart to see total cases by region okay total cases by region in a column chart you see this one it was initially giving me a bar chart and i asked i want this one in a column chart convert this thing to a right chart is ready other one a map chart to show total cases map chart let me type map visual maybe it's not able to understand me Uh, it's not coming. Maybe a pie chart. Let's try. Pie chart. Uh, total cases by region. Yeah. You just question it. It will give you the answer like this. Okay. Yeah, there are a few things, right? You know, just now it was not able to understand a few questions like map chart I asked, but it couldn't understand. I can even update the synonyms, right? So here I'll tell you one thing. Profit, I'm giving you a simple example. I'm creating one uh, data model uh, uh, related to sales report. There is something called profit. Maybe in other words, I can also call it gain. Right? Then I can use gain as a synonym. I can update the list in the back end that whenever I type total gain or total profit, this Q&A visual treats both of them as same. You also have that option to update the synonyms in the back end, right? So that whatever the simple English language that you use, you can ask Power BI, okay? So that it will understand your question and it will create the visuals for you. That's why I said like, you can create any kind of a report like this in a matter of minutes, but you don't need to be a master with all the data concepts to do this. But yeah, we'll discuss step by step how to do that. And so that, you know, most of the times we create our own visuals only, but we sometimes depend on Q&A also.
you please show how to do that in q and a yes uh, we'll we'll uh, get into that one as well when we get into the visualization section there is something called update synonyms in the settings we have that one okay load the data into power bm double click on canvas right how to do that could you please show how to do that q and a just do a double click that's it if you want to update synonyms there is something called in the add synonyms now you have that option there add synonyms now uh, you just uh, question anything there, right? I want to, uh, uh, let's say, max cases by country. Right? I'm just writing something like this. United States got the highest total max cases is this, Right, and I can convert this thing to a standard visual, or maybe after that I can convert that to into a card, right? Something like this. Okay. See, this is Q and A. Just do a double click, and you can do it. But there is something called the custom visuals also. So how to do that one? That is also very easy. Once you register on Power BI service, you will get one account like this. You can see that administrator something is there. Let me show you. You see this? You can log in. How to log in and all, I'll explain you later. Um, I want to get more visuals. There, I want to get uh, something like, of course, it's only for demo purpose I'm showing, but we don't present these things on the client's dashboards. But let me show you how it works. Maybe if your client really wants to see the data like this, you can even use that one. So how the COVID cases movement, you know, day by day across different countries I want to show, right? Then I can set it up like this. Country is the one I want to show the cumulative cases using the day, right? The period is the date reported, using the date reported. And I want to get the top 15 countries, okay? Now you see, Initially, China was the one reporting uh, the numbers, okay? You would have seen this one on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook, right? Initially, China was only the one reporting all the numbers and other countries, the COVID cases I'm talking about, okay? Other countries got very, very less numbers there, right? You see? But after China reaching 80,000 or something, then other countries also have started reporting their numbers. If you remember, right? That's 27, 30,000, 35. Yeah. Day by day, how the cases, you know, increased across uh, different countries. You see that? United States crossed and China cases are now, you know, comparatively they are like lesser. Spain, Italy got a very bad hit again. India nowhere in the picture. But suddenly, even we started getting so, num so many numbers there. So these kind of things you would have seen in uh, different platforms, but you don't need to do much. Just download it and, you know, prepare the required numbers and all and keep it there. Hardly what matter of one minute you can design this chart. Right? That's how it is. Yeah, India is here. You see that? Quickly the numbers increased. Yes. Of course, you can set it up in the proper way so that you can see all that you now right from the day one till today. And uh, the data also, they every day update it and uh, yeah, the data is available up to June 14th. The last numbers reported from India, June 14th, and zero is the count. Okay. Hmm, that's how it is. You can design any report quickly like this. Okay. Any questions?
Are we good? Okay. In Excel or VBA, we save Excel SM, Excel SX, so any specific uh, file extension to save. Yes. We have uh, you know the PBIX format, the most commonly used. The other thing is a template file, PBIT. Okay, how to create a template we'll see later, but all our files we save initially in PBIX only, PBX. Okay, this is the Power BI file extension. PBIT is a template extension. So let me take you to the types of the analytics. Uh, as part of this training, the first two, descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics. These two we can cover. <coughs> Predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics, they require other skills also. They require your business domain knowledge and other a few things like statistics, things like that. I'll, I'll take you through this one, you know, a detailed uh, explanation. Why data visualization is needed, right? A, com a very common question that we all get. Why data visualization is needed? But before that, we got a question in the chat. Is Power BI, is Power BI, is it an ETL tool? What is ETL? Extract transform load, right? Is it like an ETL tool? This can work like an ETL tool, but this is not a dedicated ETL. There are dedicated ETL tools like a talent, uh, what is that, uh, Informatica, I'm not wrong, other few ETL tools are available in the market, okay? Their job is to do the ETL only. But yes, using Power BI also, you can perform ETL activity. But we don't recommend Power BI as a dedicated ETL tool because it consumes a lot of resources at the time of getting the gathering the data and all your your end user. I mean, not end user, but at the time of doing a, a refresh activity, it may be taking a, a good amount of time. Okay, so ETL means we discussed right the data may be there in different sources. You need to get the data from different sources. Okay, extract the data transform the data into the required shape and then load it. Yes, ETL, yes, the data transformation activity can be performed using uh, Power BI also, but do not perform heavy data transformation activity in the Power BI itself. If you do that one, it will consume more resources and it will take more time. So the recommendation is that the ETL, whatever the complex ETL stuff is there, it's supposed to be done in the backend itself, the database itself so that your report can be refreshed quickly, okay? But yes, uh, I, I say, oh, yes, you can consider Power BI is also like an ETL, but uh, it's not a dedicated ETL tool. Okay, so let's take a look at why data visualization is needed. I'll quickly ask you this. Don't know how many of you are part of uh, our data analysis session. Okay, so we got one raw data here. I want to create one uh, pivot table. So what we want to show is uh, we want to show profit by region. Okay, profit by region. So if you want to see the profit by region, we'll uh, uh, show the profits uh, here and uh, region here. Done, it's that easy. But why data visualization is needed, okay? So without the data visualization also we are able to see quickly all these things, right? Fine, then why do we need the data visualization? So the question is this, I'll give you five seconds. Question is this, which region has the least profit? Time started, one, two, three, four, five, done. Central. Central, central has got the least profit and who is the central manager? Chris. Chris, right? So you'll write an email to Chris saying that, okay, Chris, your performance is not so great because uh, just now I checked the profits and uh, you're being the least, central is being the least. So I need an explanation from you, right? Something like that you wrote it. Now, very, very harsh way, okay? <laughs> Chris felt it very bad and he resigned. Possible, yeah? Now tell me, I'll do a quick modification on this pivot table and you tell me, and I'll, I'll add something onto the pivot table, like a chart. There is something called pivot chart. 
and uh, how to add the chart just keep the cursor on the pivot table go insert and take a chart type take this two seconds time which region has the least profit one two so oh. last time i gave you five seconds and you all said central now i gave you two seconds now you are saying south which one is correct let's try to understand if you look at the numbers do you see something there look at that one carefully all the numbers what is the value of central 287000 287000 south 23 lakh uh, sorry 231 lakh 231000 or 231000 you know you are confused because of the length of the decimals there when i asked you which one has a least and you are looking at the length of the number not at the decimals it's quite possible that, yeah, your decisions could go wrong if you are simply looking at a table and taking a decision. That is the reason data visualization is a very, very important. It's a simple example, okay? Most of the times it happens when we present the numbers in the form of uh, maybe a tables or a number, we get confused because our mind needs to process a lot to come to a conclusion. But when we are presenting the same thing in the form of visual, hardly takes any seconds to understand what's going wrong or where it is going good and all that. Simple example. And there is a scientific research also, right? Uh, human mind can easily understand uh, pictures and colors better than the numbers and tables. We take a lot of time to process the numbers and tables, but pictures and colors we can easily understand, right? Yeah, visuals are very easily understand. Yes, decimals are the ones that confused us, right? Why data visualization is important for that reason. And it's very easy for us if something is visualized in the form of lines and columns or bars, then we can easily figure out, okay, where we are doing good and where we are doing bad. Right, good, uh, good number of job opportunities are available. I'll take you through all these different concepts. Okay, today I showed you how to quickly create. Of course, I didn't publish that report. I'll, I can publish that one as well. Prerequisites, I think most of you may have this question. Like I want to learn this course, but I don't know. As I mentioned, excellent uh, SQL. If you have some fair understanding, yes, good to proceed. Okay, otherwise I can also show you the SQL concepts anyways but not the detailed SQL concepts, whatever is needed for Power BI, those things will be covered, okay? But if you are looking for complete SQL, then uh, you need to join our SQL course as well. Okay, why SQL is needed? Because in the real time, the data is always stored in a database. You need to know how to interact with the database and get the required amount of data. Okay, so that's the reason SQL is needed, but to create quickly any visuals and all in Power BI, a few of the SQL concepts are needed that anyways, I'll, I'll cover. Okay, so basic knowledge on uh, our uh, Windows operating system and things like that, browsers, Google Chrome, Edge or Firefox, internet connection, knowledge of Excel formulas and SQL is desirable. Um, I think everything is, I hope all of you are good, right? And other thing is that Power BI, you definitely need to know Windows environment only, not Mac. Why? Because Power BI is available only for Windows. You cannot use this one in Mac. If you have Apple, MacBook, you can't install Power BI. Probably what you would need to do is you would need to install Windows as a secondary operating system on Mac. And inside that one, you can use it. But directly on Mac, you can't install it. Okay. Hmm. Why Power BI only? Why not Tableau? One thing is that licensing. Okay, and uh, Power BI is a lifetime free as a single user, but uh, it's a, I think now it is a 15 days trial only if it is Tableau. And after that, you will have to buy the license. Okay, so many things are there. Uh, the other advantage, what Tableau got, because it's there in the market uh, from 2003. Okay, it has captured already a good number of clients, but the Power BI, their first commercial edition released in uh, 2015. Just only eight years old application, but it's almost 20 year old application. But these days, most of the companies are uh, trying to migrate or trying to implement Power BI because of the licensing fee, easy to implement. And whosoever is uh, familiar with uh, Windows, uh, it's uh, MS Office applications like Excel, they find Power BI is also very much similar. Why? Because you see this one, tabs, the different options, different groups, everything looks very much same. And the terminology is also very much same. 
in Excel, if you want to highlight something with the help of a condition, what is that called? What is that feature called? You have numbers. You want to highlight the top three. What is that feature called? Conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, right? In Power BI also, we have conditional formatting. Why I'm saying this one? Because the same conditional formatting, feature is same, conditional formatting only, but the name in uh, SAP POBI, we call it highlighters. In Crystal Reports, it is LR Plus. In Click View, it says Visual Cues. You see, the names are different. Functionality is same. It is conditional formatting only, but the names are different. But when someone is an Excel user, can easily understand Power BI because the names are also same. Right? Easy to understand. Easy to write the formulas. In Excel, whatever the formulas that you use, 40 to 50% of the formulas, they are available in Power BI with the same names. Same names but there are advanced formulas available to do a powerful data analytics, okay, in Power BI. The DAX we discussed, right? Data analysis expressions. So that is where we learn all these formulas, okay? So very easy to understand Power BI environment, okay? Moreover, yeah, Microsoft uh, is at the top. This is of course 2022 or 2023 is also there. You can uh, search for that one. Right, yeah. The, I'll anyways explain. I'll take you through all these things in our upcoming sessions. If you have any questions, please let me know in terms of uh, maybe if you have any expectations or something like that. Okay, I think, um, yeah, there are a few more things. Let me show you. Um, actually, I, I just want to know when is the uh, offline classes start? On weekdays instead of weekends. Yeah. Uh, weekdays offline classes. I think uh, Monday, Tuesday they are starting. Tomorrow they have to, they will they will let you know shortly. They, you will anyways get the communication shortly. Okay. On the same weekdays, uh, you you as well you you only uh, again teaching this one or? Yeah, weekdays one is mine only morning seven thirty. Okay. See, I'm just showing that smart narrative. Um, so you see that one America, United States of America accounted for 13.47 of the sum of new cases across 237 countries. The sum of new cases range from so and so. You see this one, it's able to give the write up also to you. Right? So, so many uh, powerful visuals that are available like that. region and the total cases. Let me convert like this. You see this? So-and-so Euro had the highest sum of new cases, so-and-so percentage higher than the other, blah, blah, blah. Right, this is called smart narrative. So, so many visuals are available like that. We can also customize the smart narrative. Okay. Well, We'll discuss these things. Yeah. So any questions or anything would you like to know? This is how we can create the relationships and talk about that. Okay. So 
fine then as i mentioned right from the basics to how to prepare a dashboard and publish or how to prepare a report and publish okay so many things that we do as part of this training program um, this entire material package will be shared with you all okay so all the data sources right the ones that uh, take a lot of time can be easily automated okay so many examples are there with us right let's say i got 80 excel files right i want to combine all of them into one excel file how to do it so many sheets uh, maybe there how to do it with the different sheets how to do it with multiple sources one may be excel file one may be csv one may be access all of them combined into a, a single data set how to do that all those things are there as part of this material and i'll share this entire material into google drive the ones who are already part of uh, sql i think probably would have got that access uh, to this uh, batch this batch number is p00465 i'm typing that one there p00465 this is the batch number it's a weekend batch uh, runs between uh, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock every weekend and uh, from next saturday onwards we'll start the sessions okay as you already have some idea now what is power bi and how it looks like little idea so how to start working with power bi is, is what we're going to cover from the next week okay it's going to be almost like four four and a half weeks okay four and a half weeks mostly yeah saturday sunday and if you are looking for daily batch yes next week uh, there is a I mean, this Monday or Tuesday, there is a morning batch starting 7.30 to 9 o'clock, both online, offline, both of them, weekend and weekday. If you want to visit uh, Amit Pet location, offline. you can come here, offline classes, you can come down to Amit Pet location. Um, check with the front office. I'm sharing the front office number as well. Okay, you can uh, contact them. They will share the offline location if you want to uh, come down here, both online, offline. Um, and once the sessions are over, we'll also upload the videos. Usually after two, two, two and a half hours, a video will be available and that will be published. You all can access that one. Okay, if, uh, by any chance, if you are missing any session, no need to worry. Before attending the next session, you can watch that video practice that one and again most of the people they ask me like okay how i can master these tools no secret actually practice that's it if you are like uh lucky enough and if you are a very very quick learner then uh, you just need to practice only half an hour one hour a day but otherwise you will have to practice more time okay to understand all those concepts right but again um if you want to master any tool just like stay in touch with the tool. That's it. Every day, open it, do something. That's it. Then slowly you will understand. Uh, you learn so much in that tool, right? All right. Uh, and uh, recently they have released some program, uh, uh, like three tools we need to learn for a job of uh, as a fresher. Mm. Is Excel, Power BI, and Advanced. Uh, sorry, the other one is Power BI. Right. Excel, SQL, Power BI. Correct. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there a, uh, any information on that? Because I haven't got any information from the team yet. Uh, so when the batch will be started and how the program will be conducted in a week. Uh, uh, all right. So it is basically being handled by the our uh, KPHP branch. Um, so Kiran is the trainer there. So they rolled it uh, out. So. They are planning to start as soon as possible, maybe in this week itself, if I'm not wrong. But anyways, I can I can get you that information. If you could uh, uh, send, uh, maybe if you could just uh, send one WhatsApp message to that above, above number, Excelitex, they will definitely respond to you. I'm, I'm also here. I'll have a word with them. Uh, no, actually, all of you will get that uh, Yeah, recently I have completed my advanced Excel course uh, with the Kiran only, but I lost uh, his number. So mm -hmm. that's the reason. <laughs> Right, you can contact uh, our KPHB branch number. Uh, okay. Just a second, that is. Uh, yeah, that's the number. 
if it is a weekly classes not weekend daily classes how many days it will take almost like 30 i mean i mean this not 30 days is the calendar days i am talking about maybe around uh, 24 25 days okay yeah. is it sufficient for 24 days it is sufficient to learn thoroughly see all these tools they got so many functionality no doubt about it and even if you ask me actually is it uh, possible to cover in one month impossible so whatever is needed, whatever you know that we use regularly, and something that can uh, help us to save our time, right? Something that can speed up our uh, work. Those kind of features can be covered. But there are so many other things also, no? Yeah. Um, so whatever is needed to crack an interview and to maybe if you are looking for a job, but if you want to speed up your work and all, yes, those kind of things are definitely covered. But everything can be covered, no? Because it's a tool like uh, even continuously one uh, one year also if you sit there may be something or the other new thing you know and other challenging thing uh, thing I'll tell you with Power BI every month they come up with enhancements yes, every month yes exactly. uh, right sir offline session you are only teaching sir yes so when they come up with enhancements again you know you may be thinking like okay I'm done up to this point again a new thing will come there again you will have to learn that. There is an end to it, right? Got it. Yeah. But whatever is needed to crack an interview or to speed up your work, definitely covered in this training program. Actually, we have nine years of experience. Now we are starting into from non, uh, non-IT to IT. Hmm. Is this possible with us if we learn the basic things? Right. Most of the, again, a very common question. So I learn uh, this Power BI, SQL, and all that. So is it possible for me to switch from my operations role to this, uh, you know, data analytical roles, right? Possible. In the operations also, nine years means you would be doing a little bit of reporting, right? For sure, yes. because you may be reporting your team's related numbers or your department related numbers. What you would need to do is that present all those, you know, reports, whatever you created so far in Excel, you just try to migrate everything into Power BI. So that you will get a lot of experience and you can also mention while uh, you know attending other interviews and then you can also mention that you have uh, migrated every report uh, into you know from excel to power bi right so it's, yes, uh, reporting and analytics is a very common thing these days we all do that yes sir. i am also in non it for almost 10 years uh, so mm -hmm. i'm just preparing uh, dashboards using power bi only right now but i'm not using the dax functions mm -hmm. because uh, dax functions is not used uh, is not required uh, in a non it so because we don't uh, play with the numbers a lot mm -hmm. only uh, so that's the reason i'm not uh, so much focused on dax functions right now but i'm learning little bit uh, through youtube right yeah yeah i get it so dax functions uh, maybe in your uh, team uh, it may be, may not be needed but uh, you if you have any data analytical role not definitely not dax is needed yeah so in financial or uh, in like marketing, in that case, so we need to uh, learn DAX functions, but not in non -aid. It doesn't depend on um, the domain also. Depends on the requirements. Basically, I'll tell you one thing. If I'm working with a non-IT operations team, right? I want to understand how my team performed last year or over the last six months, how my team performed, right? And how it's going to be in the next uh, few months using some, uh, you know, uh, the forecasting model, I can design one model and I can, I can see that. Yeah. It like, depends on your requirement. Your manager says, okay, what happened yesterday? That is the case, like, you know, some of the total transaction pro you know, process, that's a job done, right? But if your manager asks like, okay, what happened yesterday and compare yesterday's number last year, same date. You get it? Yeah. yeah in that case, we need to use it. You need DAX basically comes from that requirement statement. If they say, if they give you very complex requirement, definitely you need to implement tax. It's not possible with the direct uh, formulas. So by by learning these uh, three skills like Excel, Power BI and SQL, uh, we can get a job as a fresher in uh, IT, right? Yes. As a data analyst. Yes, that is quite possible. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Kishan. Thank you. All right, then, so, yeah, please reach out to this number. I'm, I'm 
just copy pasting this once again here in the chat window and your batch is B00465. Please reach out to them for any additional information if you need. From next Saturday onwards, we are going to start the batch. We will then directly move on to subject and uh, we'll install Power BI. And I showed you how to install it. If you are able to do it in this week, great. If not, also it's okay. I'll cover that one once again, how to install Power BI and how to register on Power BI service. Okay, so that from there you can start building the dashboards. The very first day, you will be in a position to design your first dashboard, a first report. Okay. Okay, so great. Good to see you all of you. And uh, I'll see you all in the next week then. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks all.